for coming up. And I believe that we are going to learn more. So if you are here, I believe you are here with an open heart. If you can see my slide, just say, yes, I can see it. And let's keep starting. I believe in you and that's why we are doing this. And uh, just get some confirmation for one or two people. Can you see the slide? Yes, great, 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 thank you. So let's move on. So the goal of this presentation, one, is to let you appreciate that one, you can speak in public. That's the first goal, is to give you the opportunity to speak in public. The number two is to let you smile and let you know that you are not alone. And number three, as much as possible, I want you to connect with each other. So if you are looking through the chat session and you are seeing people connect with them, bring their enthusiasm. If you have questions, you can ask, but the purpose of this also is that you get to practice first also. So that's the goal of this presentation, to help you to create opportunity, to create that rapport for you, to start your journey, your speaking journey. Number two is, the question I want to ask you is, why do you need to speak in public? How important is it to speak in public? For some people, they need to speak in public because of one or two reasons. Maybe academic, maybe you want to go for a job interview. Maybe some people, they just want to learn to speak in public for no reason. I want you to know the first step to speaking in public is the fact that you need to know why you want to speak in public. If there's no reason, you cannot speak in public of power. So you need to have a first reason and the reason should compel you to speak more in public. So for example, there are people like uh, Shivansh who are using public speaking as a means to reach out, to change people, to change communities and to do more. So what is your reason? So today I want you to compel yourself to ask yourself questions like, why do I need to speak in public? Why do I need to communicate? Why do I need to reach out and be a public speaker? So if you ask this question, it's going to help you to do more. So if you're also here, please mute yourself. When it is time for you to ask questions or to even practice, you get to practice and you get to do more. But the question I still want to ask you is, why do you want to speak in public? Do you just want to speak for fun? Or do you just want to speak just because others are speaking? And this is why many people, are, they lack the confidence to speak in public because they don't have a reason. So they speak this week, next week they don't speak, next two weeks they don't even see the need to speak. For one whole year, they are not speaking in public. So if you are that type of person, sorry, public speaking is not for you. But if you are someone who has a reason, if you are someone who knows that this is why I'm speaking and this is the reason behind me speaking, then you can be able to do more and you can be able to communicate and to reach out to your goals. So the obvious thing people will ask me, I know people will ask questions like, how do I overcome fear? I know there are a lot of you, you are afraid to speak in public. You are just afraid to stand in front of people to start, uh, start a conversation. So why fear? There are a lot of reasons. And today we're going to, I'm going to tackle fear in a bit and how you can overcome this. Just like I told you, the purpose is not for me to speak too much to you, but the purpose is for you to get to practice and to practice your presentation. But I want to tackle some of these things so that you can also use this knowledge to empower people, to empower your people, maybe in school, your kids, your family, your team. You can use the same techniques to empower them. So why are people afraid? Why are people afraid? So one, people are afraid because we fear that we may be judged, fear of judgment, fear of making mistakes. Yeah, some of you, you are just afraid that once you make grammatic errors, people laugh at you. We have a lot of people here, and uh, this is going to be replayed on uh, Facebook, on YouTube, and other platforms. But the question still remains, why are you afraid to speak in public? So fear will stop you most of the times than you even stopping yourself. So fear will stop some of you just because you're afraid. So number one is identify your fear. If it is fear of mistakes, fear of judgment, fear of making errors, you need to identify that. The second thing you need to appreciate is that some of us, the societies we are coming from, our culture, 
our norms stops us from even participating in programs like this and even speaking in public. For some of us, oh, for young people, young ladies, they don't have the right to even stand in front of uh, elders and speak. That's a fact. In some communities, you are not even supposed to stand in front of elders and talk. In some religions, you can't even speak to your religious leaders. So your upbringing can bring or put fear in you as you are growing. For some others too, once they start to grow, once people start to grow, like what a typical example, I did a lot of researches about public speaking for the past 15 years. And there are some students, some kids, primary school, they are too vibrant. They make all the noise, they raise up their hand, they speak. But when they get to junior high school level, they stop. Their confidence level starts to trickle down. So the question is, what, 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 when did you realize that you started losing confidence? And based on this, they are afraid. They fear going up on stage. Once they see the stage, they are shivering. So how do you overcome this? There are a lot of things that you can do to overcome this through practice. We talk about practice. And uh, the more we talk about practice, and you also get to practice. So get ready. If you are listening to me, get ready. Your camera may not be perfect. Your audio may not be perfect, but get ready to practice. So how do you overcome the fear of public speaking? Number one is to practice. Number two, and there are different techniques that you can use to practice. Number two is to believe in yourself. Obviously, believing yourself is important. So the more you believe in yourself, the more you can get the opportunity to speak in public. Number three is that just go out and do it. If you fail, what else? There are a lot of people here. You've been afraid to speak in public in the past two or three years. You're afraid. But in one way or the other, miraculously, you get opportunity and you do it. So it's going to be like that. So put yourself out there and start to speak. You are not going to die. So, and the more you keep on speaking, the more you get better. The more you maybe you can become an MC, member, uh, master of ceremony. You can just give announcements. You can raise up your hand and ask a question. These petty, petty things can help you to speak in public. And the important aspect is your mind. What is your mindset about public speaking? Are you afraid to speak in public? What is it that you want to do that you feel like you can't do it? So your mindset is the key factor in overcoming your fear of public speaking. There's been a number of times that I get to ask, someone asks me, oh, I'm afraid to speak in public. For the past 10 years, I can't even speak in public. And I use one day to change the person's mindset. And the person starts to do YouTube videos. The person starts to speak in public of power. The person starts to create opportunities for him or herself. So it's your mindset that is playing you, that you are not enough, that you make mistakes, that you don't know what you are doing, that you are afraid, and your mindset will keep on bringing you down. But the reality is that you are losing a lot of opportunities. Opportunities to get a job, opportunities to even win the grant, opportunities to create opportunities for you to make it possible and to make it work. So I'm coming to the pitching session, but you need to learn to introduce yourself. So in the introduction or in the practice session, we are going to learn how to introduce ourselves. How can you introduce yourself? How do you talk about yourself? My name is Ibrahim Mustafa. I'm a public speaking coach. I'm the CEO of Me of Me for Africa, and I train people to speak of power and of confidence. If you have an organization that you want or individuals that you want to get training in public speaking, why don't you rely on me? You can reach out to me based on number two, three, three, four, right, my address. So how do you introduce yourself? Many people don't know how to introduce themselves. Some of you don't know how to introduce yourself and that is killing you. That is creating opportunities. Uh, that's making sure that, okay, great, great. That's making sure that you are not even able to speak. You are not able to do one or two things. So. One thing I want you to know is that learn to pitch your ideas. Before you start any business, learn to pitch. Learn to pitch your business. If, it is, if this is your business, maybe this is water that you are selling, learn to pitch it in and out. Know why people should buy this water. Whether there's a price point, whether your price is expensive, you should be able to learn to pitch it. You should meet people and tell them, this is me, my name is Ibrahim Mustafa, introduce yourself. So as a speaker, that alone, can satisfy your speaking journey. So for example, you go to a meeting, they didn't inform you that you were to speak. 
and they invite you, or maybe let's invite Shivansh to come and do one or two presentation. And what are you going to start saying? You can use your introduction, introduce yourself, then say what you want to say. You are marketing yourself. So you need to learn to pitch. You need to learn to introduce yourself. This is something that is broad. Sometimes I can use two days to train participants on how to introduce themselves. Then you need to appreciate the fact that you need to practice. Here I'm going to talk about one or two things that you can use to practice because this is a quick session. And I want you to know that you can practice. You can practice and you can do more. So if you are here, just say yes. If you are here, just type in yes. So thank you, Helena Shinda. Thank you very much, uh, Helena. I can see messages. Thank you very much. Mustafa Khadija, thank you very much. Just type in your message. Yes, Abdul Gafar. Oh, thank champion man. If there's nobody, I know. Abdul Gafar and Rukaya and Adams, uh, Zachary Adam, they are always going to be here to support. Rex for the board, thank you very much. Helena Shinda, Rukaya H. Alassane Hafiz. Zachary Adam, thank you very much. Mohamed Awal Sabo, thank you. And uh, to all of you. So let's go to practice. Fawzia Bachua, wow, thank you, Fawzia. So let's go to one or two things that you can do to practice your public speaking. So number one is that, I always say this. If you have, if, and I, thank you, Jamu. Thank you, Zakia, to you, Steve. I love this. If you are somebody who has a phone, you can use your phone to practice. How do you use your phone to practice? So maybe you want to do YouTube videos. Some of you, you don't you even want to do TikTok videos, but you are afraid to do TikTok videos. Use your phone, practice of your phone. So how do you do that? Okay, Goni, I'm going to give you the chance to ask questions. I'm just going to rush this session over. Then you get to ask questions. So Goni, I'll come to you to ask all your questions. And also you get to practice. So that's okay. So the number one thing to do to practice is that one, use your phone, record yourself, use a tripod, something like this. Put your phone there. If you want to do TikTok, you can leave it this way. If you want to do YouTube, you can leave it this way and practice, record yourself. Do it like 10 times. Record yourself like 10 or 20 times, delete that. Record, delete, record, delete. And the more you keep on recording, you are talking to yourself, you are communicating, you are creating opportunities to do more. So that's the number one way you can do your practice. So record as many times as possible and delete and keep on moving. Number two is that, let me get a book. You can read, read aloud to practice your presentation. So some of you, your voice is not that audible. Your voice is not, you don't have the much of voice. I don't equally have the much of voice, but I keep on practicing every day, reading aloud. So how do you do that? You pick a material. It could be a YouTube video. Thank you, Shivansh. Thank you, Shivansh is a great person. And once I get the opportunity, he is going to come and also share one or two things. He's somebody who is doing great things in India. And he's here. We are like a multi kind of uh, people who are here. Islam Speaks, thank you very much. So use a book, read, open the book, open to any chapter, any verse, any place, and start to read. So I'm going to read some excerpts here, and I'm going to show you how to do it. And I'm going to show you how to do it the right way. So number one is that you read. Okay, my name is Time and Easy, but it, you are, you are not communicating. So you may read like that, but it will not help you in public speaking. So you need to read like you are speaking. Don't just speak it and start, hey, my name is how strange Africa is. Do the boy, you are sitting in a bar. You are reading, you are reading aloud. It's going to also help you in a way, in a way to learn how to speak, to learn how to do more, but you need to do it the right way. Reading aloud is okay, but you need to do it the right way. And what is the right way? Number one is read it like you are speaking. So I'm going to pick a book like this, any book, or it could be something on your phone, and you read like 30 minutes. And this is how it goes. How strange is Africa? Thought the boy. He was sitting in a bar, very much like the, like the other bars he had seen along. So you are reading like you are doing a presentation, and that's going to help you. 
it's one way that is going to help you to actually keep getting better so that your phonetics, the way you sound, and this is going to help a lot of people. Some of you, when you go on stage, like and 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 the thing, and, and the, like you are blaring, you are and 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 like filler words, bad words, and stuff. Reading aloud can help you do that, overcome that. Because the more you read, the more you get to grab the words. The more you follow sentences, the more you follow structure, the more you believe, and the more you have a lot of words to bring out in your mind. So reading is important if you do it the right way. So read aloud. The other practice method, obviously, is family and friends. You can bring your family and friends together. If you have a big presentation, you are, you are speaking to 2,000 people or 500 people, bring your family and friends together. Sit them down and practice in front of them. Yes, if they are, they are your family or your brother, you have a relationship that they laugh at you. When you are speaking, they will heckle you. But that helps you. Don't fight them. Don't say, oh, they, they are jealous. No, they are going to laugh at you. But the purpose is not for them to laugh at you. But the purpose is just for you to get familiar with the pattern of your presentation. So bring your family and friends together. Anytime you want to do a major presentation, it could be your office. It could be in class. Do it. Practice in front of them and get the feedback, and you go and perform in the big presentations. So uh, you can also, there are ways that you can also do. Let's do this last practice session before we go to the next chapter. And how do you do that? You see, when I'm doing trainings for people who speak fast, there are people who naturally they speak fast, they don't pause, they speak fast. And there are people who too, they are light stammerers. Listen to this, not people who stammer too much, or light stammers, people who stammer small. You can use this pe technique to help them to overcome their stammering. Or if their mm. people are speaking fast, it's going to help them. So please help mute yourself, please. You get to talk. So this is what you do. We call this pen in the mouth technique. So you put it in your mouth, make sure the pen is obviously good, it's healthy. Don't just pick any pen and put it in your mouth for health reasons. So you put it in your mouth, you grab it and you get to practice. So you are putting it in your mouth and you keep on saying the right things. Just keep speaking. So I'm going to do an example. If this is your first time doing it, you may not be able to speak, but this is how I'm going to do it. My name is Ibrahim Mustafa. I believe and I can create opportunities for me. I am who I am and I can do it. No matter what, I can believe, I believe, I believe. So the more you do that, you get better. The more you do that, you create opportunities for you. So that you, yes. if you have, so, go on it. Oh, yes. Jamil, thank you. Just mute yourself, Jamil. A little, I'm going to come to you. Just mute yourself. So this helps you, vocal variety, your tone. If you are speaking fast, it's also going to tone you down. And also it's going to help you. Some of you, you find difficulty mentioning some words. So if you do this, a number of times, it's going to help you so that the words that you can't mention, yes, you can be able to mention them now. So it also helps. So pen in the math technique, do it like 10 minutes, keep speaking 10 minutes. Sometimes your, uh, what is, is it, your jaws, your mouth, it's going to be painful. But the more you do it, the more you get better. So these are some of the ways you can practice. Last time. Sorry. Okay, Alassane is doing my message. That's fine. Let's move on because I want to just finish this and we we'll practice. So body language is key. Body language is key. The way you smile on stage. The way you believe in yourself. The way you walk on stage. The way you look around all makes a difference. Some of you, when they invite you, let's, for example, let's invite Alassane. Say, let's invite Alassane. He comes, he runs on stage. He's just looking wild. My name is Alassane. You're, no, you're not communicating. You need to do it systematic. You need to turn with a purpose. You need to believe with a purpose. You need to do, you don't just go out, you are running, or you, because you see me using my hands, and you just come and you are using your hand. My name is, I believe in, I, no. You're not communicating. So use your hands, use your gestures. Your smile should speak to the audience. The way you move your hands, obviously, is going to help you. But let me let you know, 
nonverbal communication is very important. If I say one, I can say one. If I do this, three, this is three, and I say one, I'm wrong. They will judge me wrong. If I say, let's love each other, and I say, let's love each other, it's wrong. You see that you are, your body is saying something different, your mouth is saying something different. So what are you going to believe? So they will take your expression. So body language is key when you are speaking, especially if you don't understand some dynamics. If you are a speaker, I want to speak internationally. You need to learn to ask questions about your audience. We don't have time, I will have done audience analysis, but you need to ask questions about your audience. What, who are they? What do they do? Where are they coming from? If I go to speak in maybe uh, uh, Shivansh, his country, I'll ask, have to ask Shivansh, what are the cultural norms? What are the things you are supposed to say in your country in India? If I go to Russia, you don't go to Russia and you're speaking, you're smiling. They don't smile there. They don't smile too much. That when you are smiling, it's like you are out of order. So you need to learn to know what are the cultural norms. There are some communities, they don't use their left hand to, do, to, to point at elders. So if you go there and you, you are a fan of using your left hand, you see that you are culturally wrong and your presentation may not sync. So your body language is key. I.e. your dressing, the way you walk, your eye contact, your smile, all makes a difference when you're speaking in public. So the next time you go to, and this is what I do, I put my audience into three sections, the left, the middle, and the right. So if you are standing using a pulpit, you can st still look, disperse your eye contact to the left, to the middle, and to the right. But don't just do it one to know. If you're also walking, you walk gently to the left, like TEDx you speak to the audience. You pick one or two people. You look at them like for three, 10 or five seconds. Then you go to the middle. You do same, you go to the right, you do same. And at the end of the day, your presentation, whether you're doing 30 minutes or one hour, you were able or you will be able to reach out to all the audience in the uh, like disperse your eye contact. And that is why sometimes when you go to a, an event, you finish and you say, wow, it's like the speaker was just looking at me. No, the reality is that the speaker may not even take notice of you. But because he was able to distribute his eye contact well, he's able to, you, you feel that he was connecting with you. And that is very important as a speaker. So your body language, please, I can't emphasize this enough. Your body language can help you. It can help you to speak for long. It can give you air. You need to speak from your stomach. You need to be either from your stomach or diaphragm. These are all, they are all techniques and trainings that will help you do that. But please, I can't stress this too much. Your body language, and according to studies, nonverbal communication is 93% of what we say. Whatever you say is just, just what you are saying in public speaking. But what your actions are, how your actions are, can make a difference. So the next time you go, Take your time, rehearse your presentations, use your hands effectively and smile. But I'm not saying you should smile and say, when you go to do a, a presentation or speaking at a funeral, you keep on smiling. They will slap you because what type of smile is that? Someone is there and you are coming there or oh, I'm a speaker and you're smiling. That was on a lighter note, but smile and do more. So let's go on to, this is very important to me. See, your story is important. I don't care who you are, I don't know who you are, but your story, the power of your story is important. You may not be educated. People may not believe in you. People may not even like you. People may not even like your height, but I'm telling you, your story make a difference. So storytelling is key in public speaking. If you don't know how to tell your story, then who will tell your story for you? So you should be able to tell your story your own way. You should be able to tell your story. So if you are selling a book, some of you are authors, you've authored books. You need to tell the story of the book. Why did you write the book? Why, what is the story behind the book? People don't buy just because they want to buy. They buy stories. If you are selling this water, sell your water and tell the story behind it. Tell your own story. The experiences that you've gone through in life, you can bring them into your public speaking. The things you've seen, the things you've known. I can pick people's stories and tell them their own way. So public speaking is just about stories. 
if you don't have stories, forget. You keep on speaking, speaking, speaking. Sorry? You keep on speaking and you're not communicating because you're not telling stories. So if you are here, think about it. What is your story? How are you inspiring people of your story? How are you telling your own story? Do you believe in your story? And some of you, to be frank, you've done well because you've gone through a lot of tough times in life. Your story is powerful. If you tell your story, people will cry just listening to your story. So tell your story your own way. But I want you to know there are different ways you can tell your story. If you are an NGO, if you are in an NGO charity business, you can tell your story your own way. If you are marketing a product or service, phone, you are marketing this product, you are marketing whatever product, you can tell the story in a unique way. So how do you tell your story? I want to do the NGO way and the business way. The NGO way, charity, maybe you want to do donations. You want to go and feed the orphans. You want to create opportunities for graduates. You want to let people know that they can speak. You need to bring your tone down. For example, I'm going to do a, a, a story. I want to tell a story about how you should invest in charity. So my name is Ibrahim Mustafa. Imagine a world where there's no hunger. Imagine people waking up for three good days. There's no food. They can't eat because they don't have food. And that's the story of the children's home. And I want you to join me with the little that you have to join me for us to make a donation, to help young people there so that the hunger they have, we can help them to also get one meal a day. And that is the story of the Nyori Children's Room. So if you have whatever it is, go there, make a difference. Today, you don't know. You may be good. You may be having everything. Tomorrow, you may not have something to eat. So you see, I try to bring my voice down because I want to market that story. I want people to come on board. So you need to go emotional. Then there's this story also that I want you to buy this phone. I want you to buy a phone. How do you pitch that? How do you tell that story? Then I'll have to start. Oh, my name is Ibrahim Mustafa. I'm your marketer. And I know today, smartphones are the ish. If you don't have the right smartphone, how will you market yourself? The world will never see you. You need a phone that has quality in terms of camera, that can capture moments, that can give you clear voice calls. And that phone is this phone. I believe in you. And I know that if you have this phone, you can make a difference. And once you get this, look at how slick this phone is. It fits you because you have the status. So what am I doing? I'm marketing the phone to you. So stories differ. The tone, the way you sound, the enthusiasm, the excitement, all differs when you are telling your story. But all this, I want you to know today that you have a story, a unique story. So when you go to speak in public, tell it. Don't be afraid. Don't be vulnerable. Don't feel like, oh, my story is too bad. People may not like it. Maybe they've raped you. They've done this. They've stolen your things. You used to be a drug addict, but you are not a drug addict now. Tell it. It will change the world. So... The next thing I want you to know is be an expert in something. In public speaking, being an expert is important. Some of you, you just, anytime you speak about this, the next day you are speaking about something different, no one knows you. But be like Shivansh, be like Rukai, be like Gafal, be like Adam, uh, Zachary Adam. Be like all the people who are here, who have something they are doing. So if you want to speak to public speaking, who do you go to? If you want to do CV writing, you go to uh, uh, Gafar. If you want someone who is a passionate volunteer, who is doing great with the lead for Ghana, you go to Adam Zakaria. So what is your expertise? You need to build an expertise. Some of you are afraid to speak in public because you don't have any expertise. No one likes you. It's important. You don't know what you are talking about. So you are just a floating speaker, anything that comes. So you see, that will not give you the air to speak. That will not give you the air to be able to get opportunities to speak. So be an expert in something. Then so that people can invite you, like they invite Gafar. Shivan is doing model UN programs in India and all. They are inviting him to schools, to train schools and staff. 
because he has an expertise in something. So if you don't have an expertise in something, I can train you for 10 years and you'll not be still, you'll not be able to speak in public. So be an expert in something. So it, it could be leadership. It could be that social media marketing. It could be that you're installing solar panels. It could be that you are a public speaking coach. It could be that you are a life coach. You are doing graphic design. Do something so that people can invite you to talk about that thing. The more you do it, the more people will place you high and do invite you to talk about something. Then also before you go on stage, research. Please research your audience, research what you are going to talk about. Don't ever feel that you are the best. You go and speak without even doing research. My first speaking engagement out of Ghana, I was to speak in China and a big organization. But because they invited me, I, I thought like I've been doing public speaking. So I'm just going to go there and I'm going to speak. So I didn't do audience analysis. I didn't ask them, who am I going to speak to? I just picked my bag. Fortunately, I was doing another two events, World Economic Forum and that particular training. So after the World Economic Forum, I just picked my bag, went to that training, and I didn't do audience analysis. I didn't even take time to research again about what I'm going to say. I just feel like I'm the one, I'm going to do it. But when I went in and I started talking to the, the first person who introduced me, say, hey, my name is, and uh, she mentioned a name, that she is, a candidate, a PhD candidate at Perkins University. The next person who introduced uh, uh, like herself to me, oh, she's a lawyer. And she's also in, Ch uh, in China there doing great things. And we're two speakers. The first speaker was a billionaire. Like when we say billionaire, among the top 10 billionaires in uh, China, he was among the top 10. So when I sat down, it now dawned on me that I didn't do my audience analysis well. I felt like I was just going to speak to anybody. So I just went there. So my low self-esteem started crippling in. I started asking myself, hey, what problem have I got myself into? What am I going to say now? How am I going to say it? Then, then and fortunately for me, the billionaire started whatever he was saying. He inspired the audience. And you know how it is. When you are speaking in, at a place and you are two or three speakers, they will always go for the one who is richer. People want to go and take pictures. They want to go and take photos. They want to, oh, he's blowing here. They want to associate. And look, here I was, local champion, sitting down, thinking about, hey, what am I going to say? But in the process of uh, the billionaire speaking, something dawned on me. And I kept, I asked myself, you came all the way from Ghana and they invited you. I didn't invite myself there. They invited me for a purpose. They invited me for a reason. And I said, and the reason was public speaking. So I don't care who the person is, whether the person is a billionaire or PhD or lawyer or doctor, I'm going to speak my mind, what I know, the experiences. And that is what happened. I went there and I spoke about what I know. And at the end of the day, I was surprised that the people I was afraid of, that they would judge me. That was 15 years back. They came and they were taking pictures with me. And they say, wow, we are proud of you as a young African. You've been able to inspire all of us, speak your mind and impact us. I've learned, and people, you see someone's father, who is a, a PhD holder, someone, doctor, older man, come to me and say, wow, young man, you've inspired me. And I said, wow. So why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this to let you know that you need to do your research first, and you need to be an expertise in something. And also I'm telling you to introduce I'm telling you this to let you know that public speaking is not about any terminologies. It's speaking from your heart, the things you know, the things you believe in. And the way, if you're able to speak from your heart, you can be able to do more. So the next time you get opportunity to speak, please just do it with power. Do it with uh, uh, precision and keep believing in yourself. Let's go on. I want you to know that you have a story, yes? But sometimes they are going to knock you down. Sometimes things are not going to work. Sometimes it's not going to be the way you expect. Sometimes things are going to be tough. Sometimes things are going to be hard. But I want you to know, you can make a difference. No matter who you are, no matter what you do, you will make a difference. One day, they may knock you down. You may fail in your quest to speak in public. 
but you can make a difference. You will change the world. So from today, don't give up on you. Go out and start to speak. Create opportunities and keep speaking. It's not going to be easy, but you are worth it because you have the power to come back. You have the power to stand in front of people. If you make mistakes, so what? If you fail, so what? If things don't work out, so what? If you go and you fall, so what? If they knock you down, so what? I want you to know that you can do it. I want you to know from today that you can do it. You can make a difference. You can make a difference and you will go out to make that difference. So don't give up on you. Don't give up on yourself. Keep creating opportunities, keep believing and know that it's going to be possible. I know that yes, you have what it takes. I know that yes, you will make a difference. And I know that you will win. Yes, like Helena say, Helena Shinda says, you can do it. And I can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. So thank you very much. And I believe that we have come to a point whereby we will ask questions. So if you have questions now, why don't you bring them? Why don't you bring your questions? And we get to answer some of the questions that we have. So let's go back and let's do the questions and answers. So let's see how we do it. Let's see how we do it. So I'm just going to stop the share. Right. So welcome again, once again. And let's ask you our questions. This is the time to practice. This is the time to practice our speaking. So if you have questions, you can bring them in. So Goni, Ahmed, Bukhari, your time to ask questions. Raise up your hand if you have a question. Raise up your hand if you have a question. Alassan Suleimana, your, hands, your hand is up. Unmute yourself. I don't think they, they are ready. Okay, so your hands are up. Okay, so we have our first question. Please, but I encourage you to come up on stage and practice. Please come up and ask your question. That's the first way that you have to do it. Come up and ask your, your question. Come up and ask your question. Okay, so uh, Hajaru, unmute yourself and act. Okay, great. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, my name is Hajaru, and my question is, can one overcome stage fright? If yes, how? If no, how can you maneuver yourself around it? Wow, great, great. That's powerful. So stage fright is... Uh, great. So that was a great question. And uh, great. There are a lot of ways that you can use your phone. So there are a lot of ways that there are a lot of ways that you can use to overcome stage fright. The number one is actually practice. Practice is key. So before you go on stage, so there are things that you need to do. There are three things that you need to do to overcome stage fright. And that is before your presentation. What are the things you are supposed to do? And during your presentation, what are the things you are supposed to do to overcome stage fright? So before your presentation, there are one or two things. Then you have to practice, number one, before your presentation, practice your stage fright. Number two is, Practice to know what are you going to start with. Most of the times people say this, oh, I want to go on stage. When I go on stage and everything will vanish from my mind. And I want to say, tell you this, it's not that everything vanishes from your mind. It's that you don't know how to start your presentation. 
So you can see people, they are good. They've prepared all your presentation. They've prepared all your slides, but they don't know what to start with. So they, did, they know all what they want to say, but they don't know whether when they go up, they are going to say good morning or good evening, or they are going to say introduce themselves. So you need to know what you are starting with. That's number two. Practice and also know what you are starting with. Then also, your briefing techniques. You are afraid, you are shivering, things are not working because fear. So you need to learn to brief in and brief out. So briefing techniques will help you to also overcome stage fright. Number three is or four is that your positive self talks. What are you telling yourself when once, once you are on stage? I can do it. I believe in myself. I'm the best. I can create opportunities. So these self-talks will help you to practice or to overcome your stage fright. And there are also other things that you can do. Maybe finally, is that once you're on stage and there's fear, start to ask questions. So once you are on stage and you are tense, you can ask questions to your audience. And once your audience start to answer this, those questions, you will regain your stage your uh, unconsciousness or you overcome your stage fright. For example, I go on stage and I see that there's maybe pressure and people are not concentrating and stuff. Then I ask question, who has a dream? Or what is your dream in the next five years? So please, someone should start with that. And the person will take the microphone. Oh, my dream is I want to build this business. I want to do this. I want to do that. Then they start with. It could be just asking them a question. And the question could be that introduce yourself. I want to know the people I want to speak to. Then this one will say, my name is Adams. My name is Zakaria. They start to do that and you get to uh, appreciate that. So these are some of the techniques that you can use to help overcome your stage frights. And there are more too that you can do. Zakaria Adam, welcome. Okay, Zakaria, great. Thank you, Hajar. Zach. We can't. Okay. Hello, Mr. Can you hear me? Yes, boss. We can hear you. Hello. Yeah. Hello. We can hear you. We can hear you. Zachary, we can hear you. Please, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. We can. All right. Thank you very much for the opportunity, and then, and thank you very much for creating this for us, and. You are very, I mean, instrumental in our group. I got to know you, that was 2016. And since then, I started following you. And then I started putting myself into, I mean, leadership and then into volunteerism. And I see myself to be improving day in, day out. But I have a question. Right. Anytime that I see like, um, you have a platform to talk and all of a sudden they invite you, then you feel some kind of, I mean, some kind of fear, some kind of panic within you, though you you believe that you can do it. I yeah. don't know. Is it is it is it is it, is it is it something natural? Is it something natural that it has to happen? And how do you try to control this panic before going forward? Right. Great. Uh, great question, and thank you for the compliment. And uh, you've also been supporting me in terms of what I do, the shares, the likes, and the, all the times you follow in the events. This is what happens. It's called life. Speaking is such a way that your body sometimes resists. Your body tells you that you can't do it. So your body, your mind is telling you that when you, what, what if you fail? What if things don't work? And 90% of speakers go through that. Nervousness. 90, like, let me tell, let you know, 90% of speakers go through nervousness. Talk about uh, the oppress, talk about Barack Obama. And this is what uh, is interesting was that Oprah said that almost all the people she has interviewed from Barack Obama, from Jay Z, from Beyonce, from all the great people she has interviewed, at the end of the day, this is the first question they asked Was that okay? So they asked a the question like, Was the interview okay? Did they perform? So you see that subconsciously, Everybody has that feeling that, what if I go and I make some mistakes? What if I go and things don't work out? So it happens to almost everybody. But I want you to know that 
that shouldn't stop you. Just know that's a normal feeling. But go out there and speak. Why are you afraid? Why is that feeling coming? Because it's telling you, your body, is, your mind is telling you that you can't do it. Things are pushing you. Things are telling you that, oh, I can't do it. Oh, I cannot do it. Oh, this is tough. This is difficult. What if I go in and the people insult me? For example, you are going for a political program and you overheard that the person who went and spoke, the first speaker, they actually did the person away. What will you feel? Go in and it's your time. And I can quite remember in 2015, 16 there about, there was a, a young man who came from Accra and I was in Tamil at that time. He came, took a lot of people's monies and decided to organize an event, told them that it was an uh, entrepreneurship seminar. And I was one of the speakers. He invited me to speak. And he literally went and the space for the people to sit was in the sun. Just imagine Tamale Stadium. The people were sitting in the sun and they were angry, already angry. They've paid to come to an event and they are sitting in the sun. The first speaker who went on was speaking, the person was Roger, if you know Roger from Bolaga. And Roger started speaking and the moment he, one of the uh, participants complained that, ah, why did you bring us in the sun? And there was no microphone to communicate to the people. And the people were literally like 500 people, participants, sitting down. And Roger opened his mouth and said, ah, I don't know, it's the organizers who brought me to speak. And the people got furious. They were just insulting him. They were insulting him like, you know, Tamale, how it is. They were just insulting. And I was sitting down. I was the next person to go. Put yourself in this shoe. How will you feel? That the people were angry, the people were tough, but you were the next speaker. So, and they had to cut the first speaker short and they asked me to go up on stage. That day, if I had, if I could, like, I was having medicine, like Juju, I would have vanished. I would have vanished from that place. But this was what happened. I went up on stage and I started acknowledging it. I said, I know you are angry. I know you are tough. I know things didn't go on well. And with me, if it was me, I would not agree to sit in the sun like this, paying money. But I also told them that, but let, I want you to also know that is entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is going out of your comfort zone. Sometimes doing things that you are not even supposed to do. Sometimes going through tough decisions, tough times. And at the end of the day, you should be able to deliver the results. So if you are sitting here, don't ever let this situation stop you. The only thing you should do is use this as a learning platform to build your business and to do more. And they started clapping and they started laughing. And from there, I got their attention and I delivered. So you see, fear will come. I was sitting down afraid. What if people, these people throw, so, throw me out of there? They throw some pure waters on me. But you see the strategy I use. So all the people you are going to speak to, or all the speakers, they are always going to be afraid because they don't know the audience. You don't, you don't even know. One audience could even stop your presentation. You don't know whether your microphone, you don't know whether your phone or your presentation will get missing, will get corrupted. You don't even know whether the lights will go off and on. And you don't even know the people you are speaking to also matters. Sometimes, uh, imagine they ask you that tomorrow, go and speak to the president of Ghana in front of the president of Ghana on a live television. Fear, you can't even sleep, but it's normal. It's normal. You can do it multiple times. You can keep doing it. So the fear will come. Keep pushing. Don't stop. Keep pushing. Don't stop. The other thing that I want to end and uh, I invite Mohammed to come is that, please, before you go and speak, make a list of the things you want to speak about. So make it, make an agenda. When I go first, I'm going to introduce myself. You write it down. The next thing I want to say is I, I want to talk about leadership. You write it down. Then after leadership, I'll talk about vision. You write it, agenda down. Then I'm going to thank the people, conclude and calm down. So when you go and you are even tense, you have that on your phone. Then you can refer to your phone and say, oh, I want to talk about this. Then you talk about it. Oh, number two, you just hold your phone or your paper. It could be a jota, notepad. You hold. If you don't do this sometimes, 
Sometimes you go on stage and you forget. And you start speaking rubbish. You don't know what you are saying. So this is also another technique. Make a list of things you want to talk about. Just make an, an outline of the things you want to talk about. So when you are tense, you take your paper, you go through. If it's a question you want to ask, and I do this to some of the parliamentarians I coach and ministers I coach. I say, when you go on parliament, on the floor of parliament, write down your question. You write it down. If it's a question, don't just get up and mess up. Write the question down. When you get up, then when you stand up like this, it helps you. If you forget the question, you can equally just read. Simple and sit back. Have you ever seen someone who has taken the mic to ask a question? The person would like use like 30 minutes and you don't even understand the question. It's like, uh, uh, I want to ask the question is that, uh, the, and the person is just saying a lot of uh, 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 things that at the end of the day, they'll say, oh, please, uh, we beg you, just make your question snappy, make your question short because the person has no outline. So if you, even if it's a question, write it down. And the more you write it down, you can do better with that. So I hope I, I, I helped answer you. Mohammed, Mohammed, okay. Naheem or Mohammed, any of you, you, just get ready, get ready. Naheem or Mohammed? Naheem, unmute yourself. Great. Okay, audio connecting, audio connecting. Naheem, you can ask your question. Naheem. I think uh, Naheem. Okay. So let me check your comments. Can you hear me? Great. Can you hear me? How are you? I'm fine. Uh, my name is Opola Naheem, all the way from Nigeria. Wow. Can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, I want to sincerely appreciate you. Uh, you've really taught us a lot. And I, I believe this will go a long way in assisting us uh, to take away that stage fright whenever we are called to speak. Thank you. I want you to expose us, if there's a kind of uh, book you can recommend for us that will also assist us in achieving our dream of public speaking. And that is what I actually want to ask from you. Okay. Thank you very much. So you can see I'm smiling. With me, there are a lot of like 1,001 books uh, that I can recommend. So there are a lot of books that sometimes I, I love books. And I just go up and I buy books. Sometimes I don't even need the books, but I buy them. But there are books that I've, uh, I'm reading and I love those books. Currently. Is the book I'm reading. Okay, this is the book I'm currently reading. And uh, it helps you. This is Atomic Habits. So Atomic Habits. This is a book that I recommend that you get opportunity to. If you get opportunity, please go out and read this book. It tells you how to start habits, small, small habits. So it may in the book, you may learn things that will help you even in your public speaking journey. For example, if you wake up every day, you say, I'm going to read something, a chapter, one day, right? It's a habit. So you wake up, first thing you do is, I'm going to read a chapter, a day. So first thing you wake up and say, okay, I'm going to practice a day, or I'm going to do a video, a day. So you wake up and you say, I'm going to do five minutes video. You record yourself, and that is okay. So this book will teach you that, how to form uh, habits. Then there are books that I have, Think Like a Monk by Jay Shetty. I have uh, great uh, speeches that change the world. I also have, there are a lot of books, to be frank. There are all of, ego is the enemy. Sometimes ego is the enemy. There are people who, they want to learn. They want opportunities to learn, right? But they feel too big to learn. They feel too big to learn, right? So you can be able to do that. You can be able to do... Uh, you can be able to do more in terms of getting this book. So if you also have, and this is a learning journey. Okay, so Shivansh, thank you for, I didn't see that earlier, Shivansh. So he is, has another meeting. 
So there are a lot of things that you can do. There are a lot of books that I can recommend. I also have my book, which is a public, uh, the P Confidence Speaker. This is my first book. And I have close to 35 different books now. More than even 35 books I've published. Then you have TEDx for speaking. So for those who want to go on the TEDx stage, you can use this book. There are a lot of books. Think like a monk, sell all the soul, tools, tools of titans. There's a book called Tools of Titans that you can uh, also get. So there are a lot of them. So if you still have questions, you can still ask. Naeem, you start. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you too. Rexford of War, the man himself of War International. Hello. Hi, yeah, boss. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Rexford, Ghana. Uh, I wanted to ask this question. How do you overcome this, um, the panic when you are in the, uh, in the public, especially the, the shaking of the legs? Yeah. Sometimes so, um, yeah. you'll be in the public and your legs will be, uh, um, start dancing and stuff. <laughs> How do you overcome that? Okay. So the first thing you can do is that you start to know if your legs or your hands is shaking. They, when you, once you acknowledge that, you can stop it. That, that's the first thing. Once you know that this is the problem, once it starts, you can move. So for example, next time I'm going to stand up to do this program. For example, you are, I want to stand up, but my camera is somewhere. I want to demonstrate. So let, I can demonstrate over there. So if you realize that you are holding a microphone and your, your hand is shaking, right? If it is right hand, please put it to the left, right? If you feel like your hand is still shaking, like put the micro, like you are holding a microphone, it's shaking. Just make sure that you do like you're not speaking. You try to move away, just look small, smile and bring it down. Then once you bring it down, you breathe in, breathe out, then you start to speak. For some people, it's voice, especially ladies. You have queer voice. You know, hello, my name. Then you, everybody know that Charlie there's fear. So when you go up on stage, don't just go up on stage and start speaking. Stand, settle, pause. Then you start. So it, and the pause will not be like you do. You are there two minutes. You are standing there looking while no. When you go. Make sure like five seconds, you stand. You don't start to say something. Some mm -hmm. people will just come. Once they just come, hello, my name. No, please. You shake. Things will happen. So that's number one. Make sure you 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 consciously take note of that. Stand. Take some three five seconds. Then you say your first word. Hello. So you see that once you say your first word, you are going to gain some composure, and sometimes. When you realize that you are shaking and it's in the form of a training or a free program, something that you can ask the audience questions, ask them a question. And once you ask, ask people the question, they pass the microphone around. Oh, I just want, so it can be like this. I want to know people's names. So I'll just say, okay, please uh, MC or like the people around. I want to know three or four people in the audience before I start. So give the microphone to them to introduce themselves. Then, oh, then the moment the microphone is going around, then you try to regain your self-confidence. So you can actually do that. Then there are so sometimes too, when your legs, is shake, your legs are shaking, try to move a little bit. Try to move a little bit. It has happened to me before. And I could realize that it was, it was G GTV live program. It was live audience and live TV. That time I didn't even start public speaking. So I went to ask a question. When I took the mic, I realized that my one leg was just shaking like, just shaking, like that's a 310, seriously shaking. So I had to move a little back. And once like it was just shaking, then I started to breathe in, to breathe out. And in my mind, I was telling my mind that I'm going to be fine. In my mind, like things are going to work out. So this and many techniques can help you when you feel like you are shaking. Immediately, when you, you're, 
your right hand is shaking, please try to move the microphone down so that people will not even know and regain your conscious. And once you regain, you turn it to a, a left and do. If it's your legs, try to move, get some air, breathe in and breathe out, create some jokes if, you, if they, 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 there's the need and you will be okay. Uh, Naim. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, I need to equally share my experience. Okay, great. I'm a, I'm, I'm a public affair officer in my place of work. Right. As a public affair officer, you are expected to talk. And most of the events, you are, expect, you are also expected to handle the program. So I always develop a street fight. When I say the commissioner, the permanent secretary, on the seat. Yeah. So that I don't know what to say. Yeah. But seeing people of high profile on the seat, that also gives me a lot of uh, scared. Huh? How, how do I present this? So I think you, in one of your, you've answered this question, uh, what you should do to, uh, to overcome this. I, there was a time I, I see I see my my voice shaking, so it took me some minutes before I could control it. Yeah, and I really want that to repeat itself. So that is why I'm also looking for every means to make sure I, I overcome this. Wow. And one of the reasons I also joined this this training. Great, great, and uh, your voice. There's power in your voice, and uh, once you mucho and do more, I'm telling you, you can do great things. Fawuzi, Fawuzi. Oh. And that's yes. 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 Okay. So like Fauzi. Okay. So let Fauzi go because Fauzi, uh, hands are your hand has been up. So go up. Go. Yeah. Yeah. My two just a story. Uh, right. I think uh, you've answered that. Uh, my similar to what Naim said. In fact, when you get to the stage and you see high profile people, people you think they are learned than you then you just get yourself shaking but in a way i was in the university then ah then it was this topic that we were, we were supposed to present uh, but then i wasn't part of those who were to do the representation so i i was just in the i mean part of the audience so it go to questions and answers and perhaps contributions Within my small group, I, I used to have a group study mates, that stuff. Uh -huh. So I was known among them, at least. I used to lead them there, and I was always comfortable. Yeah. So I sat down, planned my thing that when I get to the stage, that I will be able to talk. But then this was some 600 plus people. Then I got to, uh, I walked out. When I was going, my members that knew me were, hey, pause, pause. then I got there. When I turned and saw the crowd, <laughs> the whole thing, but <laughs> my thoughts, but I gathered everything. Hey, then I was just lucky there was a stand, I had to run to take cover there. <laughs> then, but I couldn't even continue. Wow. So that's my story. We are still fighting it though. So thanks wow. for this insightful program. We actually appreciate that. Wow. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you very much. Mohamed uh, Alassan. Oh, Alassan. Okay. Okay, Brian Suleimana. Hey, Masa. Uh, good afternoon. Afternoon, boss. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Suleimana. Okay. I just want to thank you for the program and the nice initiative that you brought up. This right. will help us, not as individuals, but also help us as a nation. Yes, because most of us want to put up a change in our societies. And you can't put up a change without speaking. Speaking is very essential in causing a change. So that is why I see this as a great opportunity for every youth. And also, I will encourage everybody on the platform either to request for a training or organize your organization and request for a train up by uh, our Professor Ibrahim Mustafa. That would be great for us and the nation as well. 
that's all i just have to i just have to add up thank you very much thank you very much and i appreciate this thank you very much thank you brian slimana so if you, are, if you still have questions and also if you there are people who want to practice you can come up on stage and uh, practice the purpose is to help you because i realize that this is something that is a hidden fear sometimes you are afraid to speak you don't even know where you want to go to to learn how to speak and the uh, people that i see my colleagues who do these trainings they are more they charge sometimes i ask myself questions like they charge a lot of like five hundred dollars thousand dollars to do these similar trainings so and that's why i want to do it and i want to give people like you the chance to also learn and uh, to do more so if you have if you want to practice and the beauty is that all the people who are asking questions you see that their fears will start disappearing and the next time they get an opportunity to do their major events like zoom trainings they will be in charge and they can be able to speak so wherever you go whatever you do learn to show up and speak make sure that you get a nice question ask a question do a presentation, and that helps you to release that hormones that are keeping you from speaking. Naim, uh, yes, yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Great. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me, please? Yes, yes, yes. No, I, I was, I wasn't talking to you. Okay, that's I wasn't fine. Talking to you. That's fine. So let me just probably I should, I should mute myself. Okay. Great. Okay. So it it helps to learn more, it helps you to do more. It helps you to, if maybe you are Zachary Adam who is running projects or Nahim or uh, Suleymana, Ibrahim Suleymana, all the participants who are here, who are doing great things, it's going to help you to do more. So if you are here, let's do some one or two practice, then uh, we get to move on. So Abdel Gafar, I want you to talk to us about how you can create opportunities with your work what you do so if you are here you need to come up and uh, you need to do a presentation about your work there are a lot of people who are also here and i love people who are creating change in their own way and that is what public speaking will let you do sometimes we feel like it's money that will let you create wealth or create help people no it's not money changing people's mindsets my first training program at the uds University for Development Studies in Wa. That was like uh, now it is uh, Dumbo, whatever university. I didn't. I can't even remember what I said. That was my first major event. I can't even remember what I said. But still, I see people, young graduates who've completed school. They've refused to work for anybody, and they are starting their businesses. And they say, "Wow, because of you, because of what you said that day." And hello. me, uh, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, this is Alassane Asli. Great. How are you? I'm doing good, sir. Let's go. Yeah, in 2014, I think I attended a program with you at Radaj. Okay. That was, uh, a program with uh, KSM and then uh, Anita Eskin. I don't yes. know if you still remember that. Right. Do you still remember that event? Yes, 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 yes. But I saw you speak. And you said you wanted to be a, a motivational speaker. By then, that was my dream as well. After the event, I planned being a, a motivational speaker, but it didn't turn out to be so. Why? Because of procrastination. Wow. So I just want to know how can one overcome procrastination? And even currently, I intend uh, being a trainer, like someone who trains public a uh, private school teachers on how to manage classrooms, how to teach the children using teaching aids and all those things. But then I keep dragging it, keep procrastinating, pushing it off, pushing it off each and every day. So my issue is how do I overcome all this? Great. My good brother, the question I want to ask you is that tomorrow, if I tell you that you should meet me in uh, Bolga, where are you currently? I'm in Bupe. Bupe? Yeah. Let's assume that tomorrow I ask you to meet me in uh, Takradi. 
mm. for one for one million dollars, ten o'clock a.m. <laughs> Where will you be? Ah, I'll be in Takradi. Even before tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. So, to me, the the word procrastination is just a myth. The reality is that if it is important enough for you, you will do it. And also go beyond just doing it. And I see great people like Blesla. I see great people like Fatih Osman. I see great people like Helena. I see great people like uh, Abdul Ghaffar. I see great people like Adam uh, and all the people, Drama and Abdullah. These are all great people who are doing things they love, who are creating change in their own small way. So procrastination, yes, you may have it. You may say you have it, but if it is important enough for you, you don't know the reason why you need to even do what you are supposed to do. For some of us, we feel like, oh, let me do it. Let me keep on. And I always keep telling civil servants, civil, civil servants, maybe teachers, maybe nurses who are feeling that like they need to change a career, but they are being held back of the salary of what they do and they feel like this is the only thing they can do. I always tell them it's not important enough. What do you want to do? You don't even know why you want to do it. So if you want to be a motivational speaker, go beyond why uh, the reasoning. Why do you want to be a motivational speaker? Do you just want to go on stage or you actually want to make an impact? So if you, the impact is what you want to make, I'm telling you, go and do it. Because I want you to know, speaking to people, you may not know. Someone may be there and it's your simple video, good uh, one minute video. That to stop someone from committing suicide. I've seen this countless number of times. Sometimes I don't believe in what I say. Sometimes you wake up because tough times and you just do a video. You're going, you're going through depression and you just do a video and share it out to the world. And someone says, I have countless number of uh, messages. Influential people, people do you respect in society. And the person will come and say, oh, Mustafa, do you still remember that video you did? And I said, which video? And the person will show me the like screenshot of that top topic, the video. The person still has it on their phone and said, this video stopped me from committing suicide. This video, like, and I feel like, ah, this is this was just a video I just did. And how can that video stop you from committing suicide? And all what I said in that video, going back to look at the video, it's like the heading was just, I don't know what you are going through, but I know everything will be fine you will be okay. That is just the only sensible thing I said in that video. Excuse me to say, that was the only sensible thing me I heard from that video. And that has stopped someone from committing suicide. And he has shared me, like shared with me all what he planned to do, all what, and not one person, not two people. So you see, sometimes society, people are going through a lot and we judge them. Everybody judges them, but people don't believe in them. They want people to talk to. They don't even see people to talk to. Because you are a motivational speaker, you are out there. It's not going to be perfect. Things are not going to be perfect. But because you are out there with the intention that you want to inspire people, you want to give people hope, that can stop people from committing suicide. That can help people to start their businesses. That can help people to start new careers. So based on this, you don't even need to even procrastinate. Start doing it. Get the people who are already into it, follow their footsteps. If you cannot ask them, copy their lifestyle in terms of what type of videos are they doing? What about presentations are they doing? Copy their steps until you become better. So procrastination is a myth. Do what you are supposed to do. Do action. Go out, speak with power. And once you speak, you get healing for yourself. Once you speak, you create opportunities for you to do more. So my brother, start doing it. Tell yourself, commit to yourself. For the next 30 days, I'm going to create social media profiles. I'm going to start calling myself a motivational speaker. I'm going to go to schools. If you cannot go to universities, go to primary schools, start inspiring them. Go to senior high schools, associations, tailors association, hairdressers association, start to send them letters. Organize programs, go to radio stations. I have my own radio station. And at that time, I was feel I felt like I wanted to speak. I wanted to speak, but people were not giving me the opportunity. You go to this radio station, they don't give you. You go to this TV station. So I just woke up and I said, I'm going to create my own radio station. And that was how I created I Am Radio. 
and I am radio. I can reach. I reach out to people in U.S. I reach out, reach out to people in Canada, France, different countries, and it's twenty four seven. It's still running. Check on Google. You see, I am radio. Why am I saying this? I'm just letting you know that. Do what you are supposed to do. Create opportunities for yourself to speak and heal yourself because there's no time. The reality is that there's no time. You may think that we see, we saw that maybe even 2024, there are people who are already dead. I'm telling you, there are people who are already gone. Sometimes we feel like, oh, I'm strong. I will not die. Oh, me? No, oh, it's not me. No, you don't know. So do what you are supposed to do. Release your purpose. Let people benefit. If it's a book, write it. Publish it. Go out. Take, make a difference. If you want to change a career, don't just go blindly and say, okay, I want to change. No, it's not enough. Do your plan. Give yourself six months, three months, two months, or even one month and change a career. Plan something and before you stop and you change a career. So it's still time. Hope I answered you a little. Hope you get to start. Hope you create opportunities. Hope you do it now. It's always now. Do it now. And that stops procrastination. And this book helps you. The book, uh, Atomic Habits, will help you. So let's have some few people practice. And uh, we call it a day. We call it a day. But in between, I want to thank uh, all the people who are here. I want to thank uh, Ibrahim Suleiman Hajaru. I want to thank Rexford, Naheem, uh, Benny. Zakia to Yusuf, Abdul Gafar, Fati Osman, hey, Mama G herself, Blesla, Mama G, and uh, strongest woman, great woman, she's doing great things, and my very own Rukaya Inusa. Rukaya, if you are here, come up and pitch your business. Abdul Gafar, it's time to pitch your business. So, Abdul Gafar, maybe if you are here in uh, one minute. You can come to speak. Uh, just do your own pitching. Welcome. I'm I'm here. Rukaya, great, great. <laughs> Tell us what you do and uh, all the great things that you've been doing. As you right, actually mentioned, Rukaya Inusa is my name. And I'm a teacher and a counseling psychologist. Wow. Oh, great. So you have an organization, right? And in the, so in our communities these days, yes, please. Oh, wow. Great. Following the hustle and bustle these days regarding our adolescent girls and boys, um, I have taken up upon myself to champion a course of self-identity, self-esteem, and self-acceptance. And I do this with some young graduates in my community to help them, to help them understand themselves better and to prosper and be who they want to be in future and to develop visionary dreams for themselves and to help our communities grow in the long run. And so that is what I can say for now. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Wow, powerful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, I believe that's who one day bring you up to do one or two sessions and we also get to benefit. Just like you said, the community society, we need this. We need people like you to be able to just help us transform our minds and do a lot of stuff. So thank you for making the world a better place. <laughs> and thank you. Ibrahim Suleimana. Yeah. You have something? Uh, yes, I have something to add up. Okay. Yeah, my other best just uh, working with you, although I've not been in touch physically, right. but I can say I've gained much and much from you, from your TikTok sections, which I don't see these days again. I've tried getting you up, but I don't find you on TikTok <laughs> very active as you used to be. 
Okay. So what I have to say is, I I initiated a, a tech program for basic school children, comparing okay. our my locality. Yeah. It's very hard finding uh, having a a student coming in touch with computers. And as our century is moving towards uh, a computer-based century, if you don't know how to use the computer, you you become absolutely uh, absolutely uh, uh, useful in our society. So I just want to thank you for such opportunities, providing us with books and other uh, coaching sessions. We are very grateful for your services, yeah. and I hope to see you back on TikTok. Um, as then. usual. Great, thank you okay. very much. I, I, so I didn't even know you are Islam speaks. Sorry for that. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> right, I didn't know. Like, but I've forgotten that sometimes I bought books for your computer this time. But yes. I will do more. Inshallah, I will do more. Once I yeah. come, we will still do more and stuff. So thank you for, thank you for the difference. Thank you for the difference you are also making, and uh, for the little that you are giving up. Sometimes you just need to give up one or two things in terms of like creating opportunities for young people. And that's all we have. We all know that we can't rely on government alone, right? If you don't have the name, if you don't have the influence, they will not support you. So the little you have is your voice. The little that you have is your voice. Use your voice wisely. And when you start to use your voice, that is where you realize that the degree you are even having is not that it's important, but the degree may not help you like that. Your voice will become your degree to push you to <clears> the <throat> next chapter. Your voice can become the thing that will give you money, to give you money to create opportunities for you. And your voice will take you to places that you may never even imagine going to. So develop your voice. If you have an organization, develop that voice of your organization. Reach out. Do more. Last on fees. Right. So I think, uh, all right. Abdel Gafar, welcome. Yeah. Good afternoon. I'm very happy to be in this meeting. First of all, I would like to shout a big, I am inspired to Ibrahim Mustafa here for organizing this grateful event for our affairs to benefit. And thank you very much for coming out with something beneficial like this. I always thank you for organizing this. And on behalf of the audience, I would like to thank you again for coaching us and inspiring us with such useful information for us to use to benefit in our next and subsequent presentations. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you very My much. My name is Abdel Gafar, and you can call me AG. And I run a consultancy services called AG Professional Services, where we render consultancy services to NGOs, business, business owners, job requirement documents. And we also provide job requirement documents such as curriculum vita, statement of purpose, acceptance letters, and any other job requirement of many time people. Thank you very much. I am inspired. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So we also assist we also assist in you want us to take care of your presentation slides and Excel data entry. Administrative documents. We render all those services at AG Professional Services, and we do it right. Great. Great. So, thank you very much. And I also have a question to ask. Okay. Yeah. And how do you handle impromptu presentations? For instance, you go to a, a meeting and they call you up impromptu to come and say something. How do you handle that situation? Right. Thank you very much, Abdul Gaffar. And uh, thank you for all the things that you do. I believe in that. Impromptu is something that is going to happen to all of you. Maybe you're, you, based on what you do, you're helping young people. Brian Suleiman and Nahim, like Fatih Usman, Blesla, always. You get this. You're not prepared. They, don't, they didn't even invite you that you're going to speak. You are just at an event and they say, okay, 
Come and give word of thanks. Closing prayer, opening prayer. Introduce the chairman. Petty, petty things. Oh, come, oh, share your experience. It's going to happen to all of you once you start creating opportunities for yourself. Let me let you know, this is what happens. Don't ever stand up and start saying that, um, they didn't invite, they didn't tell me that I'll be speaking today, but let me see what I can do. That's wrong. You're already wasting time. They believe in you and that's why they are telling you that you need to speak. If they don't respect you, if you don't, if I don't resp I don't believe in you, I will never give you the mic to speak. So when I invite you or someone invites you, it's an honor to tell the world what you have. So stand up, say, okay, take the microphone. But before you take the microphone, you need to plan ahead what you are going to say. And that was why I was it was important for me to start off how to introduce yourself. So once you take the microphone, you start by, oh, my name is Ibrahim Mustafa, I'm a public speaking coach. And I do trainings for individuals, organizations, group. If you want training programs, I'm there to do that for you. But coming to the conference, I love the program, especially what Abdul Ghaffar said. He said that we should believe in ourselves. And I want to relate that to the audience. Whatever you do, wherever you are, believe in yourself. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. And anytime I have something to say, I'm going to stand up and say it. That is in the situation where you don't have anything to say. Introduce yourself. Sit down. It's okay. Number two is that introduce yourself, then pick a subject. Maybe there's something you've noted down that oh, maybe you want to say. Then once you introduce yourself, you mention those things. So maybe if someone says something which is not wrong, you want to assert to it. Someone says something which is important, you want to mention and add on to that, or you even have a, a different opinion about something you want to add up to the meeting. Then because it's impromptu, just make it short. I've seen people who've gone to, uh, who they've been given the mic to, to speak impromptu. And the organizers, at the end of the day, they were sorry for giving the mic to them because those people were speaking like one hour or 30 minutes. Please make it short. If it's impromptu, make it short. And once it is short, you go get an opportunity to do more. So that's number one. How do you prepare for impromptu? If you are sitting down somewhere, minding your business in the program, and they invite you to come forward and say something, it could be that you stand up and say it, or you come to the uh, podium. The moment you start to go to the podium, start to think about what you are going to say, or the moment you even accept that you are going to say something there, and you are standing up, plan whatever you want to plan before you stand up. It could be just typing what you want to say on your phone. Okay, when I get up, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm going to mention this. I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to them, or you just write it down simply. You can also have that that's outline in your mind. Introduce yourself, or then say A, B, C, D. Then you stand up. Before you stand up, then everything then it flows. If you also feel like at, uh, at that point, you cannot even stand. There are circumstances that will not even allow you or you don't even want to show yourself. Just politely ask and tell the people, oh, I'm still here. Anytime I have something to say, I will get up and say it. But thank you for the event. Thank you for organizing this beautiful event. So those are some of the processes that you can use to... Uh, move on to the level of the impromptu speaking. The important thing also is, before I go to Mavis, is that learn some patterns. Learn some patterns. Some patterns like, one, vote of thanks. Thank you, Fatih Osman. Thank you. Uh, learn vote of thanks. Learn the pattern. Because vote of thanks, imagine the president is there. A lot of people are there, dignitaries, and they say, okay, oh, get up and do vote of thanks. And you get up and you do yawa. It's yawa, you don't even know. You are going to disgrace you and your family. So learn some patterns. If it is vote of thanks, what are you going to start? You start by, okay, make it short. Oh, I want to thank God Almighty for giving us this opportunity. I want to thank the president. I want to thank the speakers and the organizers who put this together. And above all, I want to thank the audience for making this program lively. Thank you all for coming. Short, please. 
short and you are there because it's impromptu. Under normal circumstances, they are supposed to inform you to plan your vote of thanks. But if they don't tell you that, do it short. Oh, I want to thank God Almighty. I want to thank the organizers. I want to thank all the speakers. And above all, I want to thank the people, the audience who are making this event lively. Three or four sentences, you are done. You can even put it in a story. I went to a program and they asked someone to do a vote of thanks. I don't know whether the person planned it or not, but this was how he started it. He started by telling a story of a man and a little daughter in the city of Brazil. And he says, anytime the father or the daughter wants something from the father, the father will buy it. So the daughter felt like at any point in time, she says, oh, daddy, I want water. The father will get the water for her. Oh, daddy, I want a phone. The father will get a phone for her. Even if she says, daddy, I want a car, the father will do all he can to buy a car for her. And one day, something miraculous happened. The daughter knew that the father's money was $100. That was the only money his father, uh, her father had. And she went to the store, supermarket, saw some Nike boots, sneakers, nice sneakers, which was $100. Knowing that the father had only $100. And she went to the father and said, Daddy, I want this Nike uh, boots. It's $100. The father didn't complain. Even though the father knew and the daughter also knew that the money was $100. So the father went out and went to the supermarket, bought the Nike boot for her, brought it home. When the father brought the Nike boots, the daughter took the Nike uh, boots, threw it away, and ran into her room. That has never happened. She threw the boots away and ran into her room and locked herself inside that room. So the father was trying all he could to get into the room. And finally, about like one hour, the father entered the room, was able to open the room and enter. And the girl, little girl, was crying, going through books, going through all, searching all the encyclopedias in her room, scattering all the books. And the father asked, why? Why did you do that? And the little, little girl said, oh, daddy, I'm looking for a word that is bigger than thank you to tell you. And I've been searching this room, crying, looking for thank you. And I can't find thank you for you. So anytime I find a word bigger than thank you because you are an amazing father, the gesture you just did, knowing that you have $100 and you were able to use that to buy this for me. I'm looking for a word bigger than thank you. And he finished by saying that, so at any point in time, I want to look, I'm looking for words that are bigger than thank you to give to the speakers, to give to the organizers for organizing this great program. So he, he went ahead to say that, so thank you. I will use thank you for now, but I'm still looking for a word that is bigger than thank you to give to all of you. And he finished. And that was his vote of thanks. So he used a story to give vote of thanks. Right. So you can use a story. Know your vote of thanks. If they say opening prayer, know the type of prayer you're going to. If you're a Muslim, you don't want problem. You can do fatia. Just go and do fatia and close your mouth. If you are a Christian, the Lord's Prayer, Oh, Father, thank you for giving us this day. Thank you for, and you are done. Oh, opening prayer. So know these te techniques for uh, impromptu speaking. So thank you. Mavis. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for this honorable presentation. Please say, I would like to find out, assuming one wants to make a career switch, that yeah. is probably you want to also in self-confidence, but you are not well endowed in this area. How do you go about it? Is there any laid down criteria or any procedure that one must probably put in place before you even think of moving from where you are to there? Let's say, for instance, you being a teacher, you know, basically what we have um, been taught or what you learned and where you are veering into, there are two different dimensions. Therefore, yeah. please, I would like to know 
what are the measures that one has to put in place even before quitting? Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. There are no lay down rules. This is something like, it's a mirage. It's a kind of like a mirage. And there's this analogy of a dog. The dog, there was a guy passing by and there was a dog <clears throat> sitting on a nail and barking like it was painful in a way. And there was this passerby asking, <clears throat> that, ah, your dog is on, sitting on a nail. Why don't you stop it? Why don't you uh, chase the dog away and so that the dog will get rid of the pain? And the dog owner said, ah, that the nail is not hurting enough. If the nail is hurting the dog enough, the dog will get up. And that's the same analogy I use to tell people who want to do career switches. If you are going through worst things in your career, your career, whatever you are doing now, the burden, if the burden is too much and you feel like, ah, you are not appreciated, there's no career transition, you don't even know the future, and <clears throat> careers that you can say that I can calculate all the things I can get, the impact I can make in a year, the gains I will make in terms of money, the people, the disrespect people will give me and there's pressure. If you are in that type of career, there's no progression, there's no hope, there's no confidence when you, when you wake up every Monday. You know that people die, according to research, a lot of people die or get heart attack on Mondays because they wake up and they're going to jobs they don't like. They are going to work that they don't even like the co-workers. They are going to work and they feel like there's a boss somewhere who doesn't even appreciate your work. Whatever you do, the person will come and bring you down. Maybe you are a teacher. There's some secret supervisor or district officer or headmaster or assistant headmaster who just because the person thinks that they have a little certificate than you, they want to torment your life. If you are in that position, then I think career transition should be something that you do fast. You should just think about it. Take that risk. It's all about taking risk. And the risk is that, number one, whatever we do in this world, let me let you know there's a risk attached to it. I watched an interview of someone bottling, uh, the person was bottling like Coca-Cola. This bottle, well, not Coca-Cola, but drinks. And the person was having some mental problems. I, I think because Based on the interview, I could deduce that the person was having mental problems. And this was what he was doing. He said that he has a poison, right? He was eventually caught, arrested, and they, they charged him. And this was what he said. He had poison. And, for, and he was the one in charge of the, the drinks. So he says that for every hundred drink that comes, he will put the poison, one poison, in one of the drinks. For every hundred drinks, he will put one poison. So for every, that one poison, it simply means one person is going to die. That was the risk. And that is a big risk because you can just walk in, buy the drink. You don't know whether the drink you are buying is the one that has poison. Because they were doing like 2,000, 3,000 drinks a day. And for every 100, the person was putting that type of, and that's risk. So the water that you are even drinking, you are risking your life. The food that you go to buy and somewhere, or from course, uh, barriers, or from course, or whatever that place, Amasamai, we had wache. They just went and bought wache, and it was poison. Over four or five people died out of eating that wache. We've seen this countless number of times. That is the risk. You eat every day, you cross the road, you drive. It's risk. Your well, life itself is risk. So, don't be afraid to take risk in changing your career. So this is what I'll tell you. Plan yourself and say that, okay, I've had enough. I'm going to change a career. I'm going to change. But before I change, I'm going to give myself two months, one month, right? Don't just quit and say, okay, some people, your job and what you are going through may just let you say, I'm going to quit. And I'm telling you, if you quit, you may be better off. And some people too, you need to have a career plan. Okay, said, okay, I'm going to transition into, I'm going to get a new skill. Maybe I'm working, I'm a teacher, since I'm not working, let me go and do sewing. Let me go and even see how best I can even do baking. Sideline, let me see, can I do YouTube videos? Can I become a coach? Can I become a speaker? 
Then you start even learning how to make money from the trade that you are going in. You start to put pre uh, structures. You start to create an organization, start to write letters. Then see, is this worth it? Then once you feel like, wow, I can make one or two gains from here and it's better than where I was, then you stop. You stop honorably. Don't go there, insult people and say, and hey, now I'm going. You people hold your job. No, go and have a dialogue with that uh, boss that is giving you pressure or tell the boss that, oh, you've been a mentor to me. Uh, and I've learned a lot from this organization. But at this point, based on one or two reasons, I want to transition and go somewhere and see how life will work. But this organization will still remain the number one organization for me. So you create a rapport whereby if you go and things are not even working out, you can come back to the organization. So those are some of the things. Learn a new skill. Take that decision. If it is applying for new jobs, start applying to see. If it is starting your own business, just start and see. It might work for you. So that's the advice I have. And I've seen people like uh, Belau, who, has, who is a teacher. She's a professional teacher for seven good years. And she transitioned, a young lady, and said she is going to do farming. And now she has stopped the teaching and she's doing farming full time. She's farming vegetables. She's doing like uh, irrigation farming. And she has even employed two people to help her in her farm. And she says that farming is the best thing she has ever seen. And this is a professional teacher, but she has transitioned to do farming. So also look at how you can also transition, but it's a mindset thing. Take risk. If it is that you need to take risk, take it. Don't give up. It's going to be fine. If things don't work out, keep struggling, keep pushing. Something good will come and you are going to do more. So that is what I have to say. That's what I have to say. So maybe take that risk, put a plan down. It could be one, uh, one month, three months, or even two years, but do it. Invest in other things. Next time we'll do business. We'll talk about business strategy because I've seen that there are some easy things that you can just do in life and you keep on benefiting. For example, someone has a hotel or guest house and the person is making a lot of money for how many years? Maybe for, for, for the last 20 years now. The person has made a lot of gains, a lot of money from a hotel. Let's look at it, modern city. They are working hard, but the guy is just making money. Garba Lodge, uh, uh, Mariam Hotel. Now, Neem Hotel, when you go in Tamale, I'm just mentioning Tamale hotels. Kempiski, they, ha they have a lot of branches now. Even in Dubai, there's Kempiski. In South Africa, like, great places. And it's just that hotel they are running. They just built it once. And all they do is manage it, manage it, and make him money. So look at businesses that you can equally invest in. Instead of building that house that you struggle, you are managing, you are managing to build, it's not finishing. Why don't you get a place, strategic land, and say, okay, I'm going to do a guest house. I'm going to do Airbnb. I'm going to build a hotel so that you can manage that hotel to make some gains. So look for businesses that you can easily go into, and it's going to give you lifetime money then you can work on your career. So now you are not working because of money. It's something that is giving you money. You are working because you love the job that you do. So that the hotel, the guest house, the business can give you money. But if you don't manage it well too, then you have to close it down. So you have to decide, what do I want? I've seen someone who has, who has uh, built a hotel, uh, not a restaurant, a boutique, not a boutique, a supermarket. Over 200,000 uh, Ghana cities worth of products. But he was chasing this teacher dream. So you go to work and there are people managing this 200,000 uh, supermarket. At the end of the day, he had to close it down because he wasn't managing it well. So those are the techniques I have for you to be able to manage your business, your dream or whatever it is. Take risk. You are already taking risks. The air you breathe, you are taking risks. Corona, during COVID, you could breathe, just breathe in some air, and that is the, the end of your life. What is more risky than this? You go into, you drink water, and it's poisoned. You eat food, and it's poisoned. You go, you are crossing the road, and something smashes you. That is risk. 
So let's take good risk and let's do more and let's do more. Bye, Yahya, great journalist, doing great work in Tumu area and uh, representing people's voices. And why am I happy about this? Because I've seen great people, great people creating opportunities, great people like Blessila, who I always respect. I've seen Fatih, I've seen Bayi, I've seen uh, Rukaya Inusa, I've seen Gafar, I've seen Adams, and all the great Benny, all the great people who are here. I want you to know, go out, speak, go out and create that voice. So let's have one or two people practice, then we call it a day. So who is here for to practice? Intro, all you do is introduce yourself and tell us what you do. Then put in the fire. And someone to, I want someone to talk about leadership. Just do a one minute leadership session. Who is up? Let's go, raise up your hand and let's do this. Let's practice, let's practice. Yes, bye, Yahya. Time is yours. Hello, bro. Yeah. Hey, Charlie, two days. <laughs> How are you? I'm very fine. How about you too? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Right. Okay. How I am? Is I think the on times you were at the African Prosperity Dialogue. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes, yes, you were there? I was. No, I I know I could have no idea. I, I was not fortunate to be part. But, but how did you know I was there? Ah, <laughs> I mean, I better follow you. <laughs> okay, so tell us what you do in your community and why that is important. Let's go. Well, um, uh, um, bro, Mister Fire. Uh, well, I'm media. I'm a media. I'm a journalist. I practice and also um, also studied communication at GIG and um, my work as a as a community uh, volunteer um, is to at least report what uh, is happening in and around our communities. But uh, for now, I I'm in road. I'm not. In, I'm back. To, I'm back to Accra. Uh, I'm part of the Yuli Fellowship, the UNFPA Yuli Fellowship. Um, I'm under I'm, I'm undergoing training on the various aspect of life, uh, uh, leadership, um, and also uh, job uh, secret job job um, uh, on on what uh, the job market entail of of us. So currently, this is what I'm doing. And, I'm taking the position very serious. Wow. And also, you are a journalist. You have also gone through a lot in terms of uh, discrimination. Right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. So and, and, and let me... And, 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 about that. And, and let me say... And let, and let me say, I am a person with a... I, I think with, with disability and... Um, we are... I, I mean, for 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 discrimination, we we have been discriminated um, for far too long, um, and, and and more so as a general. Um, I mean, looking at the the environment in which we come from, there are lots of um, opportunities that don't come our way because of the environment in which we come from. So there are certain things that that, that we are able to have. But, for 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 the reason for where we come from, we are different. Uh, like uh, I mean, a whole lot. Wow. I mean, uh, you, uh, most of you know you know that much better than I do. Yes, I know. So, can you also give us a specific instance whereby uh, you've been discriminated against? I know I've heard like a lot, but maybe based on who you are and someone just look at you and say oh this and they discriminate against you most of all if you know me personally you know you know what i mean you cannot you just cannot try it because i won't allow that yeah. i will not really allow that because wow. i know what i know what i know what i'm capable of doing i know my rights i know my strength i know my weaknesses 
So you cannot, you can't just pull me, you can't just bottle me out. No. Right. I mean, I mean, it's it's when people are not empowered. I mean, right. to know what is right, to know what they are capable of doing, that they can discriminate. For me, you cannot. You just can't. You just right. cannot. Wow, that's Bayi Yahaya, straight from Tumu. The Tumu I always talk about, and uh, the Tumu I always market. Okay. So thank you, bro. And uh, I think one day we'll do a session with you. Great. I'll be grateful. I'll be grateful. If you have I'll some final words, then we'll go to Alas and Afiz. Just to thank you for this. Um, for this, you are doing very well. You are doing very, very well. And all I, 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 I can say is, is to encourage you to continue doing that. You might not reap the benefits today, but trust me, um, you are you surely reap it tomorrow. In I mean, and your YouTube channel, I I I I I follow it, and each moment I I I see whatever you do, and trust me, you are doing very well. Thank you very much. Keep on inspiring us, keep on encouraging us, keep on doing your best, and trust me, one day, one day, you will hit the ground. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate. So that's bye yeah. So that's our fees. Yes, please. Thank can you, you very much. Let's go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right. My name is Alasana Afiz. I'm a professional teacher. I also run Savannah Brains Academy. I am the founder. Um, I'm also the founder of uh, Blue Skip Training. Now, um, Savannah, having taught for about seven, about nine years, I have noticed that most of the students I handle find it difficult reading. So I decided that if that's the case, why can't I establish a school where most of these students or these kids that are growing up from my community can learn how to read at a tender age, even though we have not achieved that yet, but we are still on course. Wow. Um, what have what uh, concerning uh, the establishment of Blue Scape training? I've noticed that from where I come from, most of the teachers there who teach in the private schools don't even have any form of teaching um, skills. They just come to class. They just and then just, the uh, proprietors are not willing to invest in them to train them. So I came up with a blue. Um, Blue Scape training, where I train private school teachers how to handle students in group work, how to stand, handle students. Oh. I hope my voice is audible. Yes, it's audible. Okay. Um, how to handle students with the use of TLM and all those things. Now, the, the challenge I have is, um, the, is related to the story you told of a teacher who runs um, um, a supermarket, right? How yes, and how the that particular teacher ended up closing it. That is the challenge I also have, because as a human being, you cannot uh, you cannot find yourself in the, your teaching job and then also be in the private school as well. So that is that I face currently. Right. Now, why did I quit with the Blue Skip training, which I have just founded? I, I haven't yet stand, I'm still not on my feet yet. I'm thinking that if I'm able to put up things, because I just started and I've started with my school teachers. So from there, I can expand to other schools and then train their teachers for free and all those things. And even travel outside the, the, my community, go to areas like Tamale, Kintampo, Accra, Tichman, and all those places. So I want to make the blue scape big. So for that matter, I've given myself about two years. Uh, if Bluescape is, is on its feet, then I might probably have to quit my teaching job and also stay in my private school as well. Wow. So, but this is my presentation, the presentation I have for all of us here. Great. This is kind of like a testimony, something that you put forward and you like, you are foreseeing what will come and you are taking action based on that. So I wish you all in whatever you do, just you. put in the strategies, see what is working, see what is, sieve out what is not working and boom, you, you do more. And the question is, what can you scale? 
if you cannot scale something, you can't make more from it. So yeah. yes, so work on make if the is the blue scape is whatever you do. If you want to have franchises for it to make more money, it's all possible. Yeah. It's all possible. So thank you very much. Me too. So uh I have an event coming up. So I would like all of you, there is a champion summit, uh, champion summit. This is going to be online or offline. Some of you, the next speakers will be Blessla, all the great people, Abdul Gafar and stuff. But this is going to happen on the 23rd of August. So if you want to be part, of, it's a free event, champion summit. And this is like strictly virtual and free. So if you want to learn more, if you want to get great inspiration from all the speakers that are here, the time is now. You can register for the Champion Summit. You can register for the Champion Summit, who oh, and you can be part of it. So, if you to register, just get a uh, something in terms of reaching out to me, and now give you the chance to be part of it. If you also want to get trainings for your staff, for your school, for yourself, uh, why don't you reach out? You can reach out to me. There's a number that I've posted. This is my personal contact. Reach out and I will see how best we can do the training for you, your staff, your team, your members and staff. So reach out. And also for future programs, I always share that to my WhatsApp group and uh, you can reach out and we do more. So the Africa's uh, uh, Champion Summit, is the Champion Summit is going to be Africa's Champion Summit. We are going to do that in schools, universities. And we are also going to do it in cities. So individual cities, so maybe WA, we do big events. We'll bring everybody together, we'll do like, but this year we're looking at five cities, five universities, and next year we are going to look at outside Africa. So we'll do it in Africa, uh, like outside Ghana rather, in Nigeria, in Kenya, and in different countries. So, but that's at the beginning is the online session. And uh, 3rd February is the ish. So let's do this, let's create more opportunities and uh, let's do more. So if someone has something to say, you can say it now. Thank you, Stella. Thank you, Ibrahim. Thank you, Fawzi. Okay, great. Uh, Rexford, I will just send me a hi on WhatsApp. So this is a community. Naheem. Hello? Yes, hi. Uh, I actually want to know if uh, or probably you have a uh, a platform you trained, sorry, you do a training. I mean, proper training yes. on public speaking. Yeah. I don't know whether you have a platform because I, I believe you should have a kind of an online platform where you train people how to, how to organize a Zoom training. You know, if I'm one of your training, are you training how to speak, how to do a public speaking, and I can organize a virtual one like this? At least won't be able to also set up a Zoom uh, program like this and also do training for people because this, this is the, the, the point I'm trying to make. For instance, now let's assume you have people you train. Yeah. And having trained them for, for months, you can give them topic and to come and showcase what probably, okay, you are giving a topic to talk about. Probably you, are, you give me leadership now. So yeah. you already fit the date for me to, to also uh, educate on leadership. So if you are they want to set up this uh, Zoom uh, meeting, you just invite me like a kind of guest speaker. Yeah. So that, that will give me an opportunity to showcase what I've learned yes. from your platform. Right. And the topic given to me, I know you must have given me guidelines on how to go about it. So I think this will also help. It's not that we, we have the physical stuff. Can I also have online something like this? So I wouldn't want this to be the end of the, the stuff. Can come up with kind of a online training uh, program, proper training, where you give people topic and to go and develop themselves on it, then you fix the day for them to come and also talk about it. So right. I think that will also go a long way to to also uh, shape our career on this uh, public speaking. Great. I think that's great. That's okay. So send me a WhatsApp and I'll put you in a group, WhatsApp group, but like I said, we do trainings all over and uh, to, in schools, in universities, and corporate organizations. And also now I'm developing a platform whereby I can be able to uh, do more, have a, an academy 
for like specific people. Because in the past, all my mentees, those who are doing great things like Mata and all, they just like disperse. It's not a particular platform, just individual level, coaching weekly, monthly and stuff. But I'm putting it up uh, to do more. So thank you for that suggestion. But uh, just reach out to me on WhatsApp and let's take it there. All right, thank you. Welcome. So all that's at the end of the day, we are done with the first session of the I am uh, public speaking masterclass. But I want you to know that going out and not speaking will never help you to speak. So go out there, practice, learn what we've uh, teach what we've learned today, put it into action, create opportunities, create platforms to speak, go on Zoom meetings do educational tours, go to senior high schools, write letters to people, organizations, and to speak. I want you to know it's never going to be easy. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, it's never going to be easy. It's going to be tough. People will not respect you. Sometimes you feel like people should respect you. They should give you your weight, and people are not giving you your weight. I want you to know that it's possible. Sometimes you may be knocked down, and the reality is that the people who have knocked you down are not people you don't know. They are not strangers. It's your family members. It's your friends. People you believe in. People you know they will support you. People you believe that yes, when things get tough, they are going to stand for you. And those are the people who let you down. Those are the people who disrespect you. Those are the people who stab you at the back. But I want you to know, stay strong. Believe in yourself. Show up. Create opportunities. Never give up in, in life. Keep pushing. It's never going to be easy. But I want you to know, is going to be worth it. You may be speaking and no one is even listening to you. You may be speaking and sometimes you ask yourself, am I making an impact? Is what I'm working on, is it working? Sometimes you are pushing hard and you feel like, am I going forward? Or am I going backwards? I want you to know, it's possible you can make it. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to be here, to listen to me and also to learn. And may God bless all of us. May God help us to do more. May God help us. And uh, wherever you are, whatever you do, keep believing, keep pushing. Never, ever give up on your dreams. I don't care whether they like you or not. I don't care whether they like your name or not. I don't care whether you're a man or a woman. Society will knock you down. But pick yourself up and tell yourself every day, read books, find books, read books, buy books, books that you love. Read a chapter a day, a chapter a week, a chapter a month. But read, I want you to also know, lift yourself up and say that I am possible. I am enough. I am great. And God, help me. No matter what, keep pushing. Thank you very much. Thank you for supporting. Let's do this again. The next program, next training, keep in touch. And I'll announce the next training. The third February, third February is the next uh, champion summit where we get great people, and uh, some of you will be get the opportunity to speak in my ne next events. But let's keep updated. Let's keep in touch. Give me a WhatsApp call or send me a message and let's do this. I believe in you. May God keep blessing you. Thank you for coming. Thank you.